Okay, so we're live. Okay, okay, we are live now. We are live now. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Hello. Yeah, okay. Also, there are people watching. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, hi, everyone. Daryl here. Uh, we're trying this new format. Um, uh, okay. Uh, wait, uh, let me see. I find myself echoing. Oh, because I turn on the YouTube channel. I, I'm. Uh, we we are trying this new format, right? Whereby we uh, we run the webinar instead of using get response. So we used to run it on get response. But what we have is that we we are we are doing it by via uh via Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And we're using this StreamYard platform uh, so that we can stream simultaneously. Uh, so I have my colleague, Kevin. Should he be on top? Kevin there. Then I have um, I have Sean there. Hi. So Sean is in Bangkok, Bangkok now. Kevin is in our office. Okay, so uh, Kevin and I, we are in Singapore. Then... Sean is in Bangkok. So without Sean, uh, the company would be yeah. not <laughs> Okay, so uh just to just to update uh, so BKK Kongi right uh, moved to Rama 9 already. So if you go to our Hui Huang office, there's nobody there already. Okay, so uh yeah, we'll we'll do this uh Bangkok property market outlook. What we do is that we hold a Bangkok property market outlook on the first and third Thursday of every month. Typically, what we do is that we get people to sign up uh, via a webinar, and then after that we hold a webinar. But this time around, we're trying something different. So we are on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Since we already paid subscription for our Facebook Live and YouTube Live uh, StreamYard account, right? Then we might as well use it. Okay, <coughs> okay. Uh, just some, uh, just some uh, background about us. Uh, so what we have been doing, right? Uh, we, uh, I think I just put to full screen. Okay. Okay, so uh, so about us, right? Uh, we've been dealing with Bangkok property since 2012. Uh, our clients come mainly from China, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, Japan, Malaysia, Indonesia. Uh, if you if you are interested in Bangkok properties, right? I think what you should do is that uh, you can uh, join our Facebook close group. Uh, so you can go to this uh, URL. We don't really work much on our Facebook page. Uh, we work a lot on our Facebook, uh, on our YouTube channel. So this is our YouTube channel. Uh, you can go there and uh, join our YouTube channel. So what we do is that we put up videos about the latest condominiums. And then what we have is that we try to walk from the BTS or MRT station to, to the condominium so that give you guys a better, a better um, understanding of how the, how close or how far the condominium is from the main train uh, from the train station or amenities okay and uh so our agenda for the next 45 minutes right we'll touch on why invest in bangkok then we'll do some brief uh, bangkok property market outlook uh, where to invest in bangkok then uh, legal and tax matters then other matters and then question and answer so uh this this webinar is for you if let's say you are thinking of uh, purchasing a property in bangkok then you want to know whether you can legally purchase a property in Bangkok or you can and how much taxes you have to pay. So I think quite a lot of uh, investors, they have been, uh, they have, they are aware that there's this new uh, land and building tax act, which came into effect earlier of, earlier in this year, but they are not so uh, familiar as to how the implementation will go about. And I think over the course of the past couple of months, right, uh, Kevin and myself, uh, but I think more importantly, right, uh, Sean and Agnes, which is heading the team in Bangkok, uh, they have been dealing with clients uh, as to uh, how to pay the property tax on behalf of the client. Uh, I mean, clients that are that have bought from us, uh, they usually uh, get us uh, get the team to handle the property management side. So if you have a condominium, you want to uh, have proper property management, right? Then uh, please look for. Uh, Sean, so Sean is there. Okay, uh, and then we have a question and answer. But whatever it is, right, you can always 
put the question and answer there. Then Kevin is actually moderating, and uh, we will answer the question and answers uh, moving forward. Okay, so uh, why invest in Bangkok? Uh, I think that whenever you try to uh, think about a market to to invest in, uh, you, ha you have to come up with uh, a few reasons to do so. So one of the things is that uh, Bangkok has a robust legal system, uh, which means that uh, if you, I think for some of you guys, uh, you would have noticed that there is actually a developer which developed a development in Cambodia and then recently it came out in the news that the developer is asking the buyers for uh, payment because their condo is somewhat completed. But when the photos and videos were showed right of the condominium, right, the scaffolding was still there, the development is not fully built up yet. Uh, in Bangkok, right, if your if your condominium in Thailand, if your condominium is not completed, right, uh, we have an example of this. Uh, there is a there is a condominium by Sensiri that uh, was actually cancelled. So Sensiri is obliged to pay the bankers, they uh, pay the buyers back their deposit uh, together with interest. So they are actually paying the buyers uh, their deposit plus interest. So there's actually a robust legal system. If something goes wrong, right, you can actually um, sue. Um, and then there's actually a prevalent resale and rental market. What I mean by this is that uh, you can go on to uh, hit flat, you can go on to DD property. There are platforms that are buying and reselling and renting uh, the Bangkok, uh, Bangkok properties. It may not be so robust and quick in the current economic predicament, right? But the thing is that there are transactions. So there are some markets whereby if you purchase, right, that you really don't have an exit strategy. Okay, and then next, right, is that uh, Thailand has quite strong economic growth and in recent times, right, uh, social and political st uh, stability. So you don't see the massive riots and whatnot uh, that sort of plagued Thailand maybe about um, five or years ago. And generally, a lot of people were making noise that uh, once the king, the previous king passed away and handed over to the son, right, then there will be a huge political upheaval. But I mean, there are people who may not be so pleased with how he's doing, but I think generally, right, uh, people still uh, still adhere to the, still adhere to this um, form of constitutional monarchy that is set up in Bangkok. Okay, so uh, why, why invest in Bangkok? Uh, uh, I come from Singapore, so I can give you some of the events which we held in 2013. Uh, one of the pull factors was that uh, Bangkok is cheap, uh, but cheap is not always good. Okay, so some events which we held in 2013, now uh, you can see that in the past, right, uh, one event I hold, I can get the, gather like what uh, 80 to 100 people coming for one uh, for one uh, seminar. Okay, but uh, these are the pull factors. Another thing is that demographics, right? Uh, Thailand has generally quite low medium age. Then uh, based on UNESCO, right, it has quite high literacy rate of 92.87%. Uh, this this high literacy rate is the ability to read and write. Okay, so of course, if you go to places like Singapore or Hong Kong, right, our rate is a lot higher, about 98. But if you consider places like Cambodia, right, uh, they they hover at about uh, just under 80%, which means that in time to come, right, uh, the Thai workforce will be a little bit more well qualified as compared to as compared to uh, maybe its neighboring uh, developing countries as well. Okay, so the stability right of the government, the worst seems to be over. Like I mentioned, the constitution constitutional monarchy uh, keeps things in check. Uh, recent polls, right, people are generally quite happy. Uh, during periods of turmoil, right, the investment from the Chinese hardly fell. Uh, then COVID-19, right, generally was uh, handled pretty well. Uh, Bangkok and Thailand in general, right, is trying to get back to some normalcy. There's some news that uh, they are going to they are going to sort of open up uh, to foreign travelers in the near future. Uh, they actually wanted to do it for Phuket, but they delayed it. Uh. So um, yeah, yeah. I'm also hoping to go back to Bangkok, see our new office, right? Okay, so uh, infrastructure, right? Uh, Bangkok has a highly efficient rail network. If you if you understand uh, the difficulties difficulties in uh, putting up a rail network, uh, you will understand that uh, you need a lot of political clout to try to uh, set up something like Bangkok. So if you're telling me that uh, like maybe Cambodia or Vietnam is going to come up with 
uh, similar real real network right as compared to Bangkok right I think they are maybe a one or two decades behind Bangkok okay if you look at Southeast Asia right uh, other than Singapore I think uh, Bangkok's real network is perhaps the second most efficient real network in terms of uh, being in terms in terms of a real network in the city in Southeast Asia okay uh, Kuala Lumpur is starting out their real network and it's really in its infancy uh, Jakarta is trying to do something like that but I think uh, they don't have the ability to do what Bangkok has uh, and then to have two fully functioning international airports right open up uh, possibility for trade there's a developed big developed banking system and uh, there's actually adequate high grade office space in the central business district so if you put all these uh, things together and then you try to look at um, generally the neighboring countries right uh, it boats pretty well for investors who are looking at Bangkok okay so uh, tax and legal structure right uh, is relatively low taxes uh, so in Bangkok right uh, later I can show you uh, for property taxes right uh, if you if you go to places like Hong Kong or Singapore right you're a foreigner right you pay through your nose uh, to buy a property um, in Hong Kong it's like uh, 30 30 uh, percent I mean in Hong Kong and Singapore right as a foreigner you pay about 30 percent plus minus about there uh, stamp duties on top of that so if you buy a 1 million US dollar property right you expect to pay 300,000 to the Singapore or Hong Kong government about there I'm just uh, giving you a round figure but for in Thailand right uh, generally locals and foreigners pay relatively low taxes and as foreigners we also pay uh, we we pay generally what the locals are paying as well okay quite similar okay so uh, foreigners right we can actually purchase property and hold the physical title to the property what I mean by this is that I actually had people come to me and say that hey Daryl why do you talk about Bangkok when uh, maybe Ho Chi Minh is so much better but the problem is that when when my my client or my friend right comes to me and says Ho Chi Minh or Jakarta right or Surabaya the thing is that the, we are not holding the the physical title to the property we are actually buying a company which will own uh, the property because foreigners can't legally own uh, like maybe a freehold title so in if I'm not wrong in Vietnam you can only own this hole so for us foreigners we can legally own uh, freehold titles uh, to condominiums in uh, Bangkok or Thailand for that matter okay, so the relationship the rest of the world I think the main thing right is this uh, trans Asian railway at one belt one belt one road uh, you can see uh, Bangkok right is situated right in the center of this uh, one belt one road China, China's one belt one road plan so there's uh, the the grand the grand station right uh, Bangsa Grand Station is really up and running already. Uh, so it, the the larger plan will actually be to connect Bangsa Grand Station all the way to Kunming, China, and this will be and Bangkok is right in the center of uh, the whole the whole peninsula all the way up to Kunming. So uh, if you are transporting goods right, uh, this comes about as a very good central station. So you can see that there are lines that were uh, gravity to the left and to the right and through the center right uh, to Kunming China okay so uh, Bangkok is going to be a gateway to uh, to China to Kunming China and uh, okay I, I don't know about next year but <laughs> this year right I mean last year right uh, or this year this I don't know about this year but last year right uh, Bangkok is actually the number one most visited city with 21.47 million foreign overnight visitors uh, second most visited city for your for your knowledge right uh, is London okay so uh, Thailand has uh, 21 free trade agreements Singapore is 32 which is the most of uh, Southeast Asia and I'm Singaporean I'm proud, proud to say that uh, but Thailand right is also quite open in terms of uh, dealing with the rest of the world so we have uh, Thailand has a pretty large number of free trade agreements as well so you compare that to Cambodia Hong Kong Philippines Australia right uh, Thailand is a pretty open economy Okay, so Thai economy is generally doing well. Uh, GDP growth, right, uh, is pretty healthy. Uh, it was a broad-based GDP ex expansion. Uh, manufacturing ag and agriculture com uh, contributed a significant portion of GDP growth as well. It, it, the Thai economy is not uh, so reliant on tourism as it has been in the past. That means they're trying to, uh, to, to rely lesser and lesser on tourism to drive their GDP forward. Uh, but 2020 numbers should be weak. I think it's not just Thailand, uh, but across uh, across the whole Southeast Asia, across the whole world. 
I think for the two economies that are the most open in Southeast Asia, Thailand and Singapore, right? Uh, these two countries will do the worst in terms of uh, the GDP numbers. Okay, but that is also testament to how the Thai economy or Singapore economy is doing uh, in terms of trading with the rest of the world. Because uh, borders are closed, that's why we are doing not well. It's not because uh, fundamentally there's something wrong. And these are the few things that uh, you have to take note of. Uh, the Thai government is spending on big ticket infrastructure projects. If you're not already aware of this Eastern Economic Corridor, EEC, please Google about it. Uh, China's One Belt, One Road initiative is important if you're investing, uh, you want to see uh, future growth. Okay, then uh, there's actually strong interest from foreign buyers. Okay, uh, main, main interest right comes from mainland Chinese, the people from Hong Kong, uh, we have uh, clients from Japan, Korea. Uh, that's why you have Japanese areas. You have Korean areas. Uh, I like the Korean area. So if you if you are in if you are in uh, Bangkok, right, then you will see me hanging around Korean town. Uh, but for uh, for some people, they like the Japanese areas, which are Tong Lo and Ekamai. I don't I don't mind the area as well. Then recently, we've been uh, hanging out because uh, our colleagues Sean and Agnes have uh, influenced us to go to uh, to La Prao area. Then we realized, hey, that's a very chill area. So that's for another topic. But if you want to know where to go in Bangkok, right, you definitely have to uh, try to find something a little bit more interesting. You don't always go to the tourist area. Don't always go to uh, Chatu Chat. Uh, there's so many other areas in Bangkok. Okay, that's, that's for another presentation. Okay, so there's a, is there an oversupply? Uh, yes, so there's an oversupply in newly completed midtown or suburban properties, but not in downtown properties. So it is actually from uh, CBRE research. Uh, what we call uh, midtown or suburban properties, right, is that there's a lot of mass market condos. So the, if let's say you're, you're, you're talking about mass market condos, right, then uh, it's something that the Thais, they also mm -hmm. want to upgrade to a condominium, but then they cannot upgrade in these like luxury class style properties. So what they do is that there's a lot of mass market condos. There's generally oversupply there. But the thing about the thing about central Bangkok is that a lot of people from their provinces, right, as they become wealthier, they will tend to gravitate towards uh, the city. So the uh, urban migration is very common whenever a country develops. Okay, uh, maybe we don't see so much in Hong Kong or in Singapore, but urban migration. It's a natural phenomenon, right? That goes through when uh, that a country has to go through when in terms of uh, developing. So you can see when the country becomes richer and richer, people will want to migrate to places of uh, economic activity, and Bangkok is the center of that. So therefore, you see there's an oversupply in newly completed midtown or suburban properties, right? Not say an oversupply, but an increase in supply. So you can see the Thais, right? They are coming on board. They are also talking about buying condominiums and that's where that's where there's a large amount of supply but have prices uh, gone up uh, yes they have uh, if you these are the these are the prices that uh, from uh, CBRE sorry I moved this uh, this stream logo thing uh, so from CBRE right uh, they they estimated this is the I mean these are the data that that they have right so you can see for Riverside uh, Central Lumpini area, uh, your Sukhumvi area, your Silom Saton area, right? All have gone up a pretty large amount. Okay, so you can see prices uh, might have even doubled for maybe a period of about a decade and a half. Okay, and one thing is that, right, there's limited financing option for foreign buyers. So a lot of foreign buyers, right, what they do is that uh, they try to leverage, like, let's say some of my clients who are from Singapore or from Hong Kong, what they do is that uh, they take an equity loan on their current property in their hometown. Then after that, because the interest rate is lower, then after that, they pay off the Thai property in full. Uh, the thing is that uh, because of the difficulty in getting loan, right? Uh, actually, a lot of foreign buyers, they do just pay cash uh, for property. So I would think that if financing options were easier, I would think that prices would also be a little bit higher. Okay, so uh, I mean, prices do move with uh, the ease of financing, interest rates. Okay, uh, and developers need to purchase existing properties for redevelopment if they want to build in downtown Bangkok. So there are certain places, certain uh, areas, right? Uh, where I talk about downtown Bangkok, I'm not about talking about the greater Bangkok. Bangkok is pretty large. Okay, if you want to purchase properties, please purchase them in really, really prime areas. 
Okay, and uh, developers, right? I give you an example. There's a project called Park Origin Tonglo, and uh, if you are familiar with Tonglo area, right? Uh, the developer actually took over uh, this party area, which is called Arena Ten, uh, along Tonglo Soi Ten. So they actually uh, purchase and ask everyone to move out because they are redeveloping the area into a condominium. So it's not like as though there's lots of empty land, right? And then after that, they are just building on empty land to sell to you. But there's actually commercial activity and a lot of uh, a lot of amenities around that area. So uh, try to purchase properties whereby there are amenities, there are uh, there are activities around the area. Okay, don't go and purchase when now currently it's just a huge plot of grassland. Then then they say that that it's going to develop into I don't know what, uh, but. Yeah, but if you go to, down to Tong Law, you understand why the developer purchased the plot of land and sort of chase away all the shops and pubs and bars and all that. Okay, so uh, this is something that uh, we try to segregate, right? We divided the Bangkok area into the core central regions, the city fringes and the growth areas. So this is actually a map of the, uh, I mean, the Bangkok uh, real map. Uh, so. Uh, for us tourists, uh, we are always around this area. This uh, Sukhumvi, Aso, Nana, Plonchi, Chitlong, Siam. So you always go uh, Siam Paragon. Then if you want um, pirated football jersey, then you go to uh, the MBK Mall, right? So MBK Mall uh, is here at National Stadium, BTS Station. These are all where all the tourists go. Then they want to go uh, all the branded areas. Then they go Siam. Then, then after that, you want to go to Terminal 21, it's at Aso. Okay, so these are the areas where tourists always go. So the next area is where? It's around Chatuchak area. Okay, so go to Chatuchak uh, Weekend Market. Okay, so that's where that's where my my wife spends a large proportion of her time whenever she goes down to Bangkok. Okay, so she has uh, she has to make her annual pilgrimage to Chatuchak Market, right? Uh, to go and support the Chatuchak economy once in a while. Okay, so these are the things that a lot of us tourists do. Okay, but what I'm going to explain to you now, right, is the areas which we think are worthy of investing. And we broke up, we broke up uh, Bangkok into a few different areas. So this Bangsa, right, is where the Grand Station is. It's actually quite near to Chatuchak. It's actually at this area, uh, I mean Bangsa, Mochi, Kamping Pet, then after the the uh Lak Prao. So now there's this higher Lak Prao, okay, which which means higher intersection. Okay, and then there's this Silom Satom area, which is the uh, central business district. Okay, then you got Chitlom and Plonchit, which is here. Then you got Rama Nai, uh, which uh, now very proudly we are a tenant in Rama Nai. Then after that, uh, we have Tong Lo Ekamai, which is where I think that. Uh, if you are a rich expatriate, right? If I were to bring out a family, I would definitely uh, put my family up at Tonglo Ekamai. If not, for now, right, uh, there may be a change of heart. Maybe I may look at places like Lak Prao, uh, which is where the Bangsa area is close to as well. Okay. But if I want a business activity, uh, then I would go to the central business district, which is Silong Saton. Then there's a cheaper, slightly cheaper central business district. Maybe central business district number two, which is around Rama 9. Chitlong Plonchi area is where tourists are always gravitating around. Okay, but this area is also considered very, very prime. Uh, it's uh, ex sort of expensive area. Okay. So Bangsa, like I mentioned, okay, the Bangsa Grand Station is already there. Our our breeze through this, uh, it actually replaces the existing Bangkok station, which is at Hua Lampong. So now uh Kuala Lumpur will no longer be operational. It will just be from Bangsa. This is the high-speed rail which will go all the way up. So, uh, I mean, the Kuala Lumpur one down to Singapore is really uh, on already. Uh, this is the Grand Station. This was uh, the construction. It's already done already. I, will, I think we get an updated photo and put it here. Uh, well, this presentation has, has test, stood the test of time for two years. Then we never changed this style. Okay. So this is the CBD, the Silong Saton area, um, and uh, I would say the very, very the best of everything is here. Uh, this is Nadi Wireless, uh, so it's located at Wireless Road. Okay, so please, uh, if the agent tell you Wireless Road, uh, it's Wireless Road because there's no wires, right? Please go to go to Wireless Road. There's a lot of wires there. 
The main reason why it's called wireless road is because when they first started Bangkok City, uh, they did a topographic study of the city, and then they, they, they found that the best location to put a broadcasting station was at wireless road. That's the main reason why it's called wireless road. So historically, right, if you do a topographic study of the city, right, wireless road is the most center portion of Bangkok. Then you move outwards. That's why the broadcasting station was there. Okay, the embassy, US embassy, eh, uh, the US ambassador's residence is right next to Nadi Wireless. This is the Mahana Con. Uh, Ritz Carlton Residences is there. We did a video there. Okay, so these are, I mean, considered pretty prime area. You go there, right? I think you are paying uh, essentially uh, Hong Kong and Singapore prices as well for, for whatever food and everything that you're eating. Okay, so Tonglo Ekamai, right? Uh, if you haven't been to Tonglo Ekamai, please I implore you to just go down and take a look. Okay, down there, really very good Japanese food. A lot of trendy cafes as well. I think we did some videos about the trendy cafes in our YouTube channel as well. Uh, trying to break up the monotony of always talking about investing in property. Okay, so there's robust rental demand. Generally, J Japanese expatriates gravitate to this area. So normally when we tell clients who are looking at Tonglo Ekamai, we always tell them, look for places whereby provide bathtub. Why? Because Japanese tenants like bathtub. Uh, these are the type of things where if we are on the ground, I mean, I also learned from Sean, uh, they share about uh, their experiences running and renting for people. So they know on the ground what the tenants want. Then uh, accordingly, uh, we try to advise so that, you know, your unit, I mean, if you purchase a unit in Tonglo Ekamai, the Japanese, they do demand for these type of things. Okay, then this uh, the EM Quartier. Then this Grand Rama 9. Uh, sorry, this Rama 9. So there's Grand Rama 9 CBD area. The Unidiva HQ is here. Stock Exchange of Thailand is located at uh, Thailand Cultural Center uh, MRT station, which is one station away from Param Kao, which is uh, Rama 9. Then, um, yeah, it's one state, so much stop away from airport rail link. So you go down, right, you get to Makassan. Uh, two stops away from Asok Interchange. Okay, so this is a stock exchange of Thailand AIA, AIA Capital Tower. It's already there already. Uh. Okay, so, uh, okay, the super tower is not going to be built. Uh, one thing about Thailand, right, is that there is always a chance whereby a development, right, will be cancelled. Okay, but this is something that I think is important as, as, a, as a buyer, right, or even before you buy, uh, we need to tell this, we need to be frank with, uh, with buyers. That's why I left this slide in the so. This was the huge plan, okay? That's why a lot of condominiums along this stretch, right, were built. They were to cater to the super tower, but eventually, right, uh, this super tower is going to be downscaled because they did a, uh, they, they, they did a feasibility study and realized that uh, they might not be able to sustain, right, this super tower with the economic activity in this area. So they scale down. If I'm not wrong, it's going to become a hotel and grade A office space only. Okay, so, uh, Please, be, please note, uh, okay, sometimes when you buy overseas properties, right, there is always a chance we're not built finish. Okay, have we faced this uh, before in our, I don't know, I mean, I've been dealing with Thai properties for seven, eight years, I think maybe. Uh, yes, I faced it before. Uh. Okay, so this one is the Talat Rock Fire, uh, uh, Rachada. So behind the Esplanade MRT station. Okay, you can try to go. Okay, so if you're looking for capital gains, right, look at the upcoming train lines. You can refer to our website, investbankoproperty.com. There's a map below, right? You can click on the Google map, right? It can show you the upcoming train lines and the condominiums we actually plot there. So from there, right, our clients actually go and see the where the condominium. Then they say, yeah, maybe I want to buy along the train line, this train line, this condominium. Then they contact uh, like Sean, Kevin, or myself, and then we will assist you. Okay, so the legal matters, let's get, let's get to the legal matters. So the foreigners can purchase freehold condominiums up to 49% of aggregate unit space. Uh, what does aggregate unit space mean? Uh, if, if let's say you have 100 units, all of the same size, okay, then foreigners can buy up to 49%. And then uh, locals will buy 51%. So people ask me, then like that, this time when you want to sell how? Uh, as a foreigner, if you sell to another foreigner, you did not increase the foreign quota. So most probably you can sell to a foreigner. Can you sell to a local? Yes, you can sell to a local because you increase the local quota. So the problem is always locals sometimes cannot sell to foreigners if the 49% aggregate unit space uh, thing has already been used up. 
Okay, so when you purchase a condominium, right, you'll be issued a condominium title deed. Okay, so there are actually four different types of deeds. But for us foreigners, right, we are interested in this condominium title deed. So there's the Shannon title, which is the clearest title. Then there's this uh no so some go and no so some, right? Which is certificate, confirm certificate, confirm certificate of use and certificate of use. Then what we're interested in is the condominium title deed. This is just for your knowledge. Always look for the color of the Garuda emblem of Thailand. So if it's a Shonon title, freehold title, right? It's red color, okay? Then uh, the, the other two, right? The, below the Shonon title is green and black. Uh. But don't worry, uh, sometimes I have a client very funny. Uh, he call me, he say, how come my title is black? I say, hello, photocopy, okay? Photocopy machine, uh, uh, photocopy black and white. Okay, so please don't, don't scam me like that. Okay, all of our properties are, in fact, we sell, so far, I don't think we sold any leasehold properties for all these many, many years. We have always been focused on selling only freehold properties. Okay, this is a condominium title deed. Uh, just out of knowledge, right, this is my own property. La. Okay, so I don't know whether this is uh, Sean's property or so, but yes, uh, this, this is my property. property. <laughs> so, this is the back of Sean's uh, title deed okay so down here right what you have is that you write the owner details and everything so if you change owner right then you then will have some more then as a foreigner right uh you'll be issued this green uh, blue color book okay so sometimes uh then i have one person ask me uh how come got some people got blue color book and some people got yellow color book i'm not kidding uh, his, his agent actually told him uh, that the blue color book no more stock so give him yellow color book Okay, but uh, that's what the agent said. Uh. But that's not true. Uh. That's not true. Okay, so <coughs> this one is a house book, right? If you are residing in Bangkok. Okay, yeah, this one yeah. is the, the foreigner book. So for us, when we hold the blue book, right, actually inside got nothing. Okay, so this is the yellow and blue house book. If you are residing in Bangkok, uh, you will use this yellow color book. So this is the blue book with the inside of the data page. Okay, your name and everything will be here. Then this is the yellow house book, uh, and then uh, this is the the owner name and registration. Uh, it's quite small, so it cannot see, don't worry. Okay, so then, so now you know the, so next time, uh, remember, okay, when you buy a property, uh, you will be given this condominium title deed and this blue color book. Okay, at the back of the condo, right, or the, or, or the condo title deed, there's this, uh, there's this ownership thing. Uh, so it, uh, it will it will just continue. So if the house has changed hands many times, right, then you can see all the writing here, all the different owners over the years. Okay, so there are five types of taxes. Uh, wherever you buy a property overseas, right, uh, it's always important that you or anywhere, even if you're buying locally, you're buying in Hong Kong, you're buying in China, you're buying in Singapore, you're buying in Malaysia, you're buying in. Thailand, you definitely need to know what are the five types of taxes you are paying mm -hmm. as a property owner. Okay, so there are buying taxes, holding taxes, selling taxes, renting taxes, and other taxes. Okay. Okay, so please note there are some changes to these holding taxes. Uh, the Land and Building Tax Act will become effective in tax year 2020, which is now. Okay, which is now. Okay, so registration fee for buying taxes. Let's say you buy a condominium today, how much you need to pay? Okay, you need to pay, uh, there's this registration fee of, registration fee of 2%, so 1% between buyer and seller. If your seller is a developer, the developer will pay the 1%, your registration fee is 1%. So you will pay the 1%, developer pay 1%. Any other cost? Not much. It's your meter installation fee and any other miscellaneous fees, maybe a couple of hundred US dollars. So in conclusion, right, the buying stamp fees are about 1%. Okay, uh, this one really changed because this is uh, this is the older tax thing, but there's this uh, local maintenance tax act or that. These are all for very, very large properties, okay? In general, right, uh, I will say 99% of buyers will pay very little, not say nothing, okay, because there are some changes. Uh, selling taxes, right, that's for, uh, that's for holding taxes. So I actually, I actually left this here, right? So that I can show you what happened before. That's why I put asterisk. So this holding taxes, right, will be covered later. So now the selling taxes, right, registration fee of 2%. Last time the seller paid the 1%. Now you are the seller, you pay 1%, your buyer pay 1%. Okay, then there's a withholding tax. You, it's calculated at a progressive rate based on appraised value. Okay, uh, I, did a, I did a calculation on my blog. So if you can go to my blog, then you take a look and then you can see how to calculate your withholding tax when you sell. 
Then you hold a property for less than five years. Uh, it's 3.3% specific business tax, uh, the sale price or appraised value, whichever is higher. So what do you mean by hold property for less than five years? If you buy the property today, but the property complete in 2021 right, or 2022, let's say 2022, the five years only start when your name is in the title deed. Okay, so you held the property for more than five years, right? Then there's a 0.5% stamp duty. Okay, so example, this is the, this is the calculation. Selling taxes are rather lower compared to other places as well. So this one is as an entity. So some people say I want to register company. Uh. If you want to register company and buy property in Thailand, right? Please, uh, uh, all three of us will agree. Please don't do it. We have we have client who go and say, I want to go and register company and buy property. A few, a few of my clients, very troublesome. Bank account open also troublesome. Okay, uh, register name also troublesome. Uh, really a lot of trouble. Okay, but doesn't mean that you die die want to buy a property under company name, right? You go look for another agent. Still look for BKK Kong Yi. Okay, this one very important. Okay, but BKK Kong Yi will try to advise you don't buy property under entity. Okay, why? This specific business tax, right? You are a profit generating entity. That's why you have a specific business tax. This 3.3% will never go away. It will always be you are a profit generating entity, government will always tax you 3.3. Refolding tax is 1% of registered sale price or appraised value, whichever is higher, which means your selling taxes as an entity is higher. Open bank account also more difficult, a lot of things more difficult. So you want to buy property as a, as a company, right? Please don't, okay? Buy under your own name. These are the renting taxes, okay? So you just look through. I think for most of you all, you're interested in buying. And these are other taxes. So there's an inheritance tax. Okay, so please, uh, if anyone out there is looking to build a portfolio of Thai properties worth uh, Thai baht 100 million and above, right? Uh, you got three very friendly agents here, so please look for us. Okay, you got budget of like Thai baht, uh, more than Thai baht 100 million. Okay, we will, we will always be help, very helpful, actually, to, to anyone with any budget. Uh, but don't forget to call us, uh, especially if you got so, so high budget. Okay, so for most property investors, right, even those with few properties, right, inherit inheritance tax is not applicable applicable because it's for Thai baht, uh, uh, more than 100 million. Other matters are like drawing up a will. Your will must be uh, drawn up in uh, Thai law. Uh, I had the unfortunate uh, experience of having a client who passed away, then needed to uh, do some, I mean, needed to transfer the property to his... Uh, next of kin. Then after that, uh, the will was actually drawn up, not in Thailand. So there was some dispute. So uh, we actually had to, I mean, I facilitated it. It was a very, very troublesome thing. Then the conclusion, right? I mean, I had a Thai lawyer, which was uh, in Singapore, mm -hmm. then they handled it. So the, the, the moral of the story, the Thai lawyer says that draw your will in Thailand. Okay. Property management, right? Please look for someone to manage your property. Okay. There's uh, there's a very friendly Sean there, so please look for Sean to manage your property, okay? Don't, don't go and say, never mind, don't worry, I can handle it myself. Unless you worry, you want to go and deal with all these things, right? Please pay someone to do it. Like now, property tax or so, okay? Uh, Sean is helping uh, clients to go and pay their property tax. Renovation and furnishing, right? Uh, I would say that if you buy a bare unit, uh, you can engage uh, the team to to assist you with this, but there will be a fee uh, levied on it as well. Okay, because it's really very time consuming to go and do renovation and furnishing for clients. Okay, this one used to be the previous one, right? But what happened is so there's this land and building tax that it starts on 1st of January. It replaces all these acts. Okay. What's the aim of the land and building tax act? Is to decrease the tax burden of property owners. It's a more progressive tax system, which means that it tax the rich more, which is uh, a feature of every good tax system. It also uh, aims to improve effectiveness of tax collection. So they are hoping to come up with uh, proper tax collection centers. Uh, and if you collect proper tax, right? Uh, if you properly collect your tax, uh, you actually increase your government revenue. Uh, one of the things that, uh, I mean, well-run countries uh, have right, is their efficient tax collection system because it helps to pay for uh, public goods. So it pays for roads, 
pays for uh, police system, pays for you know government services. You need to pay for it some way or another. It can't always be uh, just relying on maybe what goods and services tax. You can't do that. Okay, so the Thai government is trying to uh, improve the effectiveness of tax, tax collection to increase government revenue. But this is a progressive tax system. So you see that the people who have more, they are taxed more. Okay, so the taxable properties, right, are land, buildings, and condominium units. Okay, when I talk about land, it's really land, the building. So I'm talking about the structure that's on top of it, and condominium units. Okay, so an individual entity, land, or building owner, beneficiary to land and building owned by government, any individual or corporate entity liable to pay tax on behalf of taxpayers under the Act. So these are the taxable parties. Okay, so if you're an entity, or I mean, you're a company or an individual, right, uh, you know then or your beneficiary then you have to pay taxes so the classification of properties right are these uh, so got agriculture residential commercial and vacant we focus on residential we'll glance through agriculture and commercial but i need to highlight the vacant uh property portion so you you guys will understand that the thai government is not trying to uh, discourage people from owning residential properties more to tax on those people uh, i mean the people who are holding on to vacant land so from where I come from, Singapore, right? Uh, I would say that the Singapore government has a very efficient and well planned. Uh, a very, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not to brag. I'm really very proud to be Singaporean. So I always say that Singapore has the best city planning. Our wherever I go, right? I feel, uh, I feel that my city is planned very well. Okay, but one of the main reasons is that right, the government is the main landlord. Okay, which means that the major landowner. The Singapore government can do this is because they own a majority or large proportion of Singapore land. So they can they can uh, release and hold back on land supply to try to keep residential prices in check. But that's not true for Thailand or Bangkok for, the, for that matter. There are a lot of uh, rich people, right, or rich uh, entities or rich conglomerates that are holding onto vacant land. And the Thai government wants to try to make them use this vacant land in a more efficient manner. Okay, so these agricultural taxes, these are the taxes, okay, for agriculture, this is residential. Okay, so land or building that is used for residential purposes. Okay, so the tax rate is 0.02%. <coughs> okay, so this tax-based exemption for properties with values less than or equal to tie up 50 million for individual land owners. So this one is individual land and building owner. This one, land owner means land only. Land and building owner means condo. So there's tax-based exemption, but this is only for owner-occupied. Uh, if, if, you, if you occupy this, then you don't, if you occupy place of dwelling, you see, you have to be staying inside. You're staying inside the property, then you have a tax-based exemption. For most of us, when we purchase for investment, are we staying inside? Is it, your, is it our place of dwelling? No, it's not our place of dwelling. So uh, we will incur this tax rate of 0.02%. Okay? So, but for tax year 2020, right, Thai government has approved a 90% tax cut. Okay, so example, if your property is 15 million baht, uh, tax payable is 0.02% times 15 million is 3,000 baht. So the 90% tax cut is 300 baht, equivalent to three t-shirts at Chatu Chat weekend market. Okay, so... Two, two, two. Oh, now two. Sorry, sorry, that's inflation. <laughs> I need to go back and then uh, update on my uh, Chatu Chat weekend market uh, t-shirt uh pricing okay so for uh for this year right uh it's a 90 percent cut so you pay only 300 bucks so commercial is commercial but i'm just going to glance through this vacant land uh, you can see that so long as your land is not used right uh your ceiling tax rate is 1.2 percent then you increase every year right uh by zero point uh, every three years by 0.3 percent per cap of three percent what they're doing right if you is that they are taxing the people who are hoarding onto vacant land so you can see now some developers they build halfway uh they or they just quickly go and build something they go and lease it out as car park night market uh whatever use or so okay so that they use the land okay when determining whether a plot of land can be deemed a vacant property these are the these are the things that uh that you know uh that that determine a vacant land Okay, and these are the ones that are not considered vacant. Now, I'm not going to read through this, uh, it's pretty lengthy. Okay, so the Land and Building Tax Act, right, there's a change in tax base and collection method, change in tax rates, 
cut off and payment dates, installment payment, and the Thai government has set and extended certain key deadlines. This is one thing that I need to say that the Thai government has to improve. Okay, they normally come out with a scheme, then after that they extend the deadline. They tend to uh, not have everything in place. Um, but maybe it's just um, my expectation is pretty high because I have pretty high expectation. But I think that the Thai government uh, should uh, should run through and do this. Uh, proper, but I think they're they're sorting things out, so it can be a little bit messy if we are paying for paying for taxes and all that. But they are doing the collection, so if I'm not wrong, the deadline is now end of October or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, Sean just confirmed me. So it's end of October. So the tax rate refer to this article. So my website, uh, darylam.com, my personal blog. Okay. Um. There's tax relaxation for current uh, property taxpayers. If you're paying more with the Land and Building Tax Act, you are eligible for tax relaxation for the first three years. Then there's tax exemption for certain land and buildings. Uh, it's penalty for late payment of tax. Uh, okay, so don't pay your taxes late. So my thoughts on this right, is that the tax is still relatively low. Most owners will pay very little tax. Okay, So those with a lot of properties and uh, a lot of num higher number of properties and size of bigger units will be tax heavier. heavier. So essentially, uh, they're discouraging developers from hoarding land. Okay, if, uh, if you guys, some of you guys have uh, messaged me even a year ago or a year and a half or two years ago, right? Already start messaging me, say that uh, there's a there's a plot of land, right? Um, next to Korean town, then the, it's hoarded up. San Series banner is there. So a lot of people keep saying, hey, Daryl, when this project launch, right? please inform me, I, I, will, I will buy this because it's a uh, walking distance to Hasok BTS. But the thing is that Sensiri don't release then how to buy. They are holding onto the land. So this is the, this is, these are some of the activities, uh, these are some of the, the behaviors right, that the Thai government is trying to curb, you see. So landowners right, like Sensiri, they'll think of ways to better utilize the land. Okay, so this is the, the, the tax notice and receipt. Uh. Okay, so we've got condo name, unit size, per square meter, uh, how much the tax, then after you pay, you got receipt. Uh, so this one provided by Sean. Okay, so uh, you got problem with your handling your property in Thailand, right? Please look for Sean. Uh, if not, then please go to our investbankoproperty.com website. Uh, and then these are all the portal for the latest launches in Bangkok. You need any pricing or floor plans, right? To any development, uh, we are portal, so we do we deal with every developer. You want to buy any condo, please look for us. Okay, we actually used to hold a Bangkok property tour, but obviously because of COVID, right, cannot hold. Uh, but uh, we used to hold this tour and then uh, quarterly, and then our clients attended, and then they walk from the MRT station or BTS station, right, to the condominium, so they know what they are buying. Okay, must be willing to walk, uh, uh, I actually had participant first day come very very nice makeup dress very nice and the second day uh, I think uh, decided not to put on makeup already okay because it's actually quite tiring when you go from point to point okay but it's very important because uh, you know uh, better understanding of the various location and developments so if you want anything right uh, got any questions you can email uh, Kevin or me and that's all yeah, I think, for, some, <laughs> I think we have some questions from the participant. Oh, well, where? Sorry, I'm not <laughs> used to this platform. Okay, uh, I think well, just you now we're... Like, screen, then you put up our screen. Uh. Just now, uh, I think, yeah, you're, you're, ask, you're saying about oversupply and all that. So we have a question from John, John Zhu's Heng. About, uh, he's asking, how about Saturn? So wanna, you, uh, you, wanna, you wanna reply? Mm, if he's still online, I'm not sure whether he's online, but uh, I think Saton is a very big area. So uh, it, it's also the OCBD. So um, currently, if you're talking about Saton, you have to be very near the station, Chanon Si, or maybe the BTS uh, Surasa. So I think around there is still okay. But if you're talking about Saton, that is like, you need to take a motorbike to the condo from the BTS, then I'm not I will not advise because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of condos that's like quite 
um, vacant and the rental is not that great. Those that's not near state, not walking stage, uh, distant to the BTS. Yeah. I mean. But is it still a popular pay- place for people to want mm. to stay? Do, do people come asking mm. for Saturn's uh, area, you know, compared to maybe recent more popular places like Tong Law mm. and all these places? How's Actually, uh, experience because we do renter. So recently, I mean, I'll say this recent few months, especially after COVID. So of course, all the prices got slashed and all the landlord going soft is tenant market. So uh, the popular area that we see and we rented a lot, a lot will be along um, BTS station, the main Sukhumvit line. Okay. And um, also like uh, even like Peshburi and uh, Ramanai. I mean, quite surprisingly, is that the area as well as, uh, okay, Tonglo, Ekama, yes. Unless it's a very luxury condo, but going at a very good price. And uh, even Noble Plunjit now, for one bedroom, um, there's owner going as low as 25000 but per month. Yeah, so... Previously, what, what, what previously was the for one bedroom at Noble Plunjit should be about 38 40k depending on the facing, the level. Okay. So the one twenty five k per month, uh, we have checked it out. It's actually on the low floor, uh, fifth floor, but it's actually pool view. It's at Tower A. Yeah, so now now the owners are more open. They they, they were just like, oh, I just want to rent it out. Like a TC Green owner that we have um, previously 16,000. Now he he can accept as low as 12. So it, it, it's really a tenant's market now, but... There is still a pool of tenant going around. Yeah. Okay, just that they are yes, looking, they are for looking for value, uh, I upgrade, suppose. But same rental, you know, because just like myself, I mean, for us, we moved to G Tower for office rental. It's because I have a back, bigger bargain power. So that's why I, I get a G Tower office. I mean, it's upgrade for us, but from forum, right? So MRT is just downstairs okay. and we don't have to walk. So it's really a um, upgrade for our office as well, uh. mm. Oh, okay. Then I think now I think the main presentation is yeah. over. So so I think there's a few questions I will right. I will flash it up and then we'll answer. Uh, but I also have this question that I think um, mm. uh, probably a lot of people will ask also. I, I, I probably it's on their mind. Um, where do you see this trend of uh um people moving out? To areas like Lak Prao, like demanding for properties over there, or or because the rent in CBD has come down, then people are seeing more value. They say, hey, why not? You know, now instead of thirty eight thousand, I'm paying twenty five thousand. I can stay at Nova Blanchit. So, so do you see people coming in or going out, or mm, or how is it happening actually, over there right see now? All kinds of tenants. Okay, yeah, if you're talking about Lak Prao, Lak Prao is the most popular place. Yeah, it's the most popular place. You can just walk on uh, Bangkok Street, just pull any tie or any uh aspect. Yeah. yeah. Popular with, with uh, expats or, or Thai or okay. everyone. Popular with Thai. When you say popular. But if you put any a- ties with expat boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, they will most likely all stay in La Prao because it's like a very nice, chill neighborhood. It's like a heartland. But you know, like our heartland in which way should I say? Maybe like Tiong Baru, that you have those uh, uh pre war house, that kind of like you have cafes, and there's a lot of. Uh, pubs and everything in, in in I mean a lot of restaurants and pubs quite nice environment uh, I mean yeah so there is demand even in La Prao at Ramanai Hui Kwa area there's still demand because people who work around that area they have also offices around the area yeah so um I think yeah recently the most popular one will oh, be the okay. Noble New Rachada La Prao yeah it's a joint venture between okay. Noble and uh, mm. BTS land so, so it's a JV between uh, BTS and Noble. So uh, as you know, when anything JV with BTS, right, they have very easy access to the station. This one is only like 50 meter to the new uh, BTS line, yellow line, and then uh, 150 meter to the current uh, Rachada station. Hmm. Oh, okay. And and the entry price is I know because we because there's yeah. quite a uh, quite a few inquiries. Correct. Entry price is also yeah. quite affordable, right? Three over million. Yeah. Is there a price range yeah. you think that even when next time as a foreigner I buy, I want to sell it off to a local, yeah, I mean, they will be able the to afford it. It's like three million plus, or that is like so near to the station. Is 
definitely foreigner or buy or uh, local Thai, they can afford it. Because don't forget, Thai can actually take a loan. Unlike us, we have to pay okay. for cash. Yeah, so even for right, right. 4 million, yes, 5 yes. million, 6 million, there, there are Thais who, who buy property like that because they, they can get a loan for it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, something <laughs> I think I not related really to property, is, uh, but I think, yeah, okay, um, yeah. but it's still relevant mm -hmm. to everybody. Everybody is still, yeah, we have our good friend, uh, Aaron Mark Mark. I also don't know whether he's still online or not, <laughs> dying to go back to Thailand. <laughs> uh, so, so what's the situation now uh, as a foreigner? You know, uh, first thing first is who can go back and, think, okay, and then how's the quarantine? They're open, they, we need they're to be open quarantined to people or? with work pass, visa, long-term visa. And then, uh, yes, you have to go through quarantine 14 days, the same thing. You will stay in the hotel, but they, I think they, they come up with some package with certain hotel just to help the hotel industry also. So you have, I have a friend, uh, she's a VP in the school, a vice principal. She just came back last month and did the 14 days. So she chose her three-star hotel, which mm. cost her 55K, but for the 14 days. Yeah, then, of course, then boring. Uh, then she was saying that, oh. oh, you get to have yeah time. You know, it's something like prison, <laughs> prisoner. So you take turn for different uh, people who are on quarantine. Like, okay, this room, you can go for your garden time. And then after one hour, then the other room can go out. So it's something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then situation here. Okay. okay. Um, we have lockdown. Is life back to normal? As in, uh, are people like already going back to cafes, yes, shopping streets, or how? How, the, how is it? Of course, we ha all have there. to wear masks, and of course, when you sit down, you don't have to. Uh, yeah, we have been going back to work as normal every day. I just go work nine to five, that kind of hours, and we have to put on masks wherever we go. Up, it's not exactly normal, and then we do temperature checking. Mm. Okay, but just to let you know, the checking here is quite slack, lah. So they just. You know, beep, and you know, whether you fever or no fever, they don't really care. So, and the, <laughs> mm, I mean, the expert community don't practically don't trust the Thai government about um the the low rate because to us it's like there's no checking. Just like we have a friend who are having a high fever, they don't check him at all for COVID. They just ah oh, antibiotic go home. That's all. So I believe also a lot of local Thai when they are sick, they are running a fever. They will just go and buy. Uh, medicine off the shelf. Nobody's going to go to the clinic because it's a waste of money. And the clinic doesn't work here. So if you really want to see a doctor, mm. you have to go to hospital. Yeah. Mm. So if you do get mm. to travel to Thailand, please okay. wear your mask all the time and be very, very careful also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me pull out the next question Thailand. from Korea. Several buyers in new project mm -hmm. selling the deposit I think I believe that means giving up they're their... selling their uh, option to purchase I would say in Singapore term option mm -hmm. to purchase yeah yes. so these are the buyer who are repaid a uh, down payment of uh, maybe for life life I think I can't remember this is about 20% deposit mm -hmm. and it's going to TOP now I mean going to completion so yes they are selling away and yes if you are interested you can contact us Daryl Kevin we will be able to um, get some uh, units that's uh, selling their contract to offer to you, like maybe mm. you like certain facing and then certain level, then we can work with the local uh, AP team. Yeah, because uh, even for ourselves, we did so some unit at Live uh, Ramanai and the buyer is also looking to sell away their contract because uh, it's China Chinese and it's very hard for them to transfer money out now and the uh, economy is not that well. So they are looking to sell away their contract. Mm. Okay, so are they mm. selling at a... Loss or, or mm, because they're, it's, they're yeah. just hoping to get back their deposit or they're okay to take some discount on their deposits or most of them will be e will be eager to take back part of the deposit so their price are very negotiable you can get a discount maybe five ten to fifteen percent of their of the uh the down payment they have paid mm. Mm. so it's still a discount for us lah I mean if you can get yeah. something like that yeah. No, I think I have to remind everyone to be very realistic because I have people, mm. I, I really have somebody who messaged me like, mm. uh, when prices drop 50%, uh, please call me. Then I don't think I'll call him. Uh. Never mind, <laughs> la, let them wait. Uh. They, can wait until, they can wait until after COVID, the prices go up 50% or so, they will not be able to get their, get their place. So Yeah, so I mean, I mean, uh, we put everything into perspective, right? I think mm. that 
uh, if prices, if you're getting something at about like uh, 15 to 20 percent off, I think it's a really good I think deal. It's a good buy. Yes, it's a good buy. Yeah, and it, then and then you see there's always a saying like investment when you see blood on the street it's time to buy so why are people waiting i'm also not sure because there's a lot of developer oh. that are actually giving very good good discount just like um like uh SC assets they're also giving very good discount major i mean com of course all these discount the big discount are those completed projects okay completed projects they want to get rid of them as well so they are actually giving very good promotion i, I you, yeah Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think if let's say anyone has been following us for the, mm -hmm. for this, the since the day that we've started, right? Mm -hmm. We've always just given a snapshot as it is about the Bangkok property market. It's not always perfect, but if let's say you are looking to enter into a uh, property in Bangkok, then uh, and you are waiting for opportune time, which meant that maybe like a year or a year and a half back when people were saying prices were too high, I'm waiting for the next recession. Then now that the recession is here, right? Uh, the same people are telling me, yeah, yeah, you go lower, you go lower. Then I don't know where you, I, I don't know how low you go. Uh. I mean, there's one guy who, I think he messaged me by email. He messaged me say, well, price, well prices fall by fifty percent. If if they fall by fifty percent, please contact me. Then obviously I never reply his email. <laughs> I, I mean, because, I don't know uh, how to reply. How, no, how no, to reply just tell him if prices fall by 50%, uh, I think I won't dare to buy anymore. That means there's something oh, really right. very bad globally and I'm not going to use <laughs> you know, cash anymore. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's why some I mean some some buyers when they, they post certain questions uh to us is a bit difficult, especially like somebody just mm. email saying that is it true that this uh, this area condo dropped by 20%? But how am I supposed to answer this question? You get what I mean or not? Because don't forget that property data is always uh, on hindsight, which meant which meant that transactions have to complete in let's say like this month September. Then after that, uh, a, a research house has to compile the data and then maybe release it at the end of the year. Then we will know on hindsight what happened. Uh, but by the time when you go into the market, right, when you so called reach your low, uh, uh, it's really not low already. Because don't forget, whatever data that comes out today. Is it was a transaction a couple of months ago. So how you yeah. how you the bottom very difficult. Yeah. And I also want to add, just to let everyone know, please do not keep just based on the price, uh, the asking price or the selling price. If you're the landlord, uh if you look at hitflat.com or DD property, don't just look at the asking price and say, Wow, I can rent more for 60k. That is an asking price. Asking price oh, is yes. not a transacted price. And then another thing um I got owners who would like to ask me. How confident are you to sell for me? Please, if I'm so confident, <laughs> I'll be buying down the whole building and sell the whole building. You know, these are really like depending on your asking and the market. Like now it's tenants market or buyers market. So how, how fast you want to sell, how serious you want to sell, then how much you going to price. It's not how confident I am to sell your property. True. You know, something like that. Yeah. And in Thailand, there's no URA. There's no, uh, what's that? Uh, what's that? Um, in Singapore, we can check the authority that yeah, we can go online and log in and key our block number and put the sell, selling price out. In Thailand, there's, not, there's nothing. We only have to base on our market sense when we work every day with other agents and all. Yeah. True. Okay. Yeah, we have the next question. Oh, sorry, yeah. there's a the comments portion here. Yeah, you didn't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, this one probably, yeah. Sean, you're more familiar mm. and aspire. So, okay, so, uh, Stefan yeah. Wee. Let me answer you if you're online. Okay, Aspire Asok Rachada. It is not exactly what the name claims to be Asok or Rachada. Okay, it's <laughs> actually in a very small soil. Um, let me think. The last time I go in, I think it's the soil next to the Thai, eh, the, the China Embassy, just opposite Ramanai. And you have to drive for more than 10 minutes to get to a very tight, small little soil. Okay, soil is actually a lane. Ah. Ah, a very it small lane. The one that we video, right? Yeah, yeah, the one that wow, like Black Week broke. The one that was sold out, right? That, that, was it was it sold out? Then they they kind of like uh, no say, la, okay. don't buy, don't buy no, they, say, <laughs> they say sold out in Singapore. Remember, because they only give maybe one or two floor to Singapore, so it's like yeah, oh, so out. Yeah, you buy this project, I I'm not kidding you. Ah, uh, you are in deep uh, deep trouble. Stefan, you're welcome because I just want to give you my honest opinion. I myself drive all the way there. Hope 
hoping to you know give you all a good video on the distance, but it is so far. And in the end, I can't even do a three point turn coming out from the soil. I have to go all the way straight and exit by Ding Dang, which is another yeah, road. Video, yeah. Video yeah, we have a video, so so you can go to the YouTube and, and <laughs> do a search. Yeah, so then you will yeah. find the the video that mm. Sean tried to drive. I remember yeah, so I, I, I drive drive to some construction site and stuck there. Or something <laughs> yeah, like. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so now you cannot yeah. walk. Confirm yeah, cannot walk. Cannot walk. And, cannot walk. And, and please, I'm a person who walk everywhere. Definitely cannot walk. Yeah, cannot walk. Cannot walk. Yeah. Uh, okay. So confirm, we have. Don't, don't buy. Don't buy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Confirm never buy from us. Uh. Developer ask, approach us to sell. We never sell. Yeah, we don't want to sell. Okay, yeah. the next one is Ken. Since the market has softened, has the buyer market increased during the season? Mm, market, buyer's market increase. Yes and no, because as a lot of buyer, they, you know, because of the global crisis, they are also unsure whether they want to come out uh, with money to buy the house or how stable their own income is. But we also have saw another pool of buyer that entered the market because they are already waiting and waiting. So we have they have this spare cash that, oh, I'm going to book. So in fact, actually, this year we do sell condos online, right? Daryl and Kevin. Yeah. yeah. So yes, yes. um yeah. So what we do is we can actually do a virtual viewing, like online using WhatsApp or Line app. So the buyer can actually I can walk through and visit the property on behalf of the buyer. Yeah. So. Yeah, we, we, we have buyers who are those who are really ready and waiting for prices. So those are the ones that enter the market now. I think there's a global uh, mm. race to find better yields, you see. Because mm. there's, uh, I think inflation moving forward will be a significant problem. <coughs> Therefore, uh, from, from where we are, right? So uh, I, I'm not sure whether you guys know uh, like that. Kevin and I, we also deal with Singapore properties. And what happens is that the Singapore property market is actually increasing in price in, during this period. Uh, one of the main motivations for buyers, right, is that I think some, a lot of people, they are looking for yield. Which, like, mm -hmm. I give you an example. My, my father actually went to a bank in Singapore and asked whether he could put his money in a fixed deposit. So the interest rate, right, was I think 0.4% or 0.6%, which is absolutely pathetic. And my father is a very risk adverse person. So what happens is that he asked the banker whether he has something else. The banker tried to sell him uh, a structured product, which will give him higher returns. And he actually considered it, you know. So that means that people who traditionally are not risk takers are going out there because, uh, because the if you don't take any risk, the yield that you're getting, the money that you're holding, right, is going to depreciate in value. So everywhere across the globe, right, uh, there is this rush to yield, uh, to find higher yields. Um, you you ask me whether it's right or wrong. I cannot fault people for looking for higher yields. You see, the thing is that. There, there are different motivation to people buying property. Some people may say that I just buy the property and then if it holds value, right, or it doesn't increase in price, doesn't matter because I keep it in the bank. I keep the money in the bank. The bank also not going to increase. Uh, the money is also not going to increase in, in value. So that's why people rush to buy properties. In, in all honesty, right, these couple of months were actually busier than during the, during the time when everything was in lockdown. We have inquiries today i'm actually i actually went to meet uh meet people to settle documentation about uh i had a client who purchased a property that i went to settle the documentation for him then so i think the property market is moving it's not moving as uh quickly as it, it did maybe two and a half years ago but it is not totally dead in fact it was dead maybe three four months ago or four months ago at the peak of the crisis but i think now currently the interest has shot up and you can see from our invest bangkok property youtube channel uh since the since the covid 19 crisis and since the governments all started to print money right for whatever reason our subscribership shot up then we crossed three thousand subscribers in a, in a matter of a couple of months don't forget we've been running this channel for almost two years right? it took us about one and a half to two years right in fact two years to reach about thousand plus it took us it took us a mere couple of months right to hit another thousand plus or two thousand subscribers so 
and it all happened during this period. So I think the the general public is actually looking at investing uh, instead of holding on to cash. So don't expect it to drop too low because there is always this uh, raise to use. Uh, but always buy within your means. Uh. So uh, and and if you if you're buying virtually, right? Uh, please look at where the property is. Uh, just know that. Aspire Asok Rajada, right? It's most probably one of the worst properties that you can ever buy. I'm sorry, you're not bought property, yeah, but I mean, I mean, I I don't yeah. use my words, okay? So if I, I, I think talk, when if, if any AP join and look at our our uh, our live post, uh, they'll faint and they will they will start call, text, texting me tomorrow and say, hey, why you all say that? So, oh yeah, um, but that's the truth, lah. We do yeah, not want to truth. recommend anything that is like this. And mm. uh, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, but uh, okay. Uh, just a quick one because I think we the, the session is a bit too long already. Maybe some people read on falling asleep. Okay. Uh, live also and live also hype. Okay, who are the tenants? Tenants are people working in G Tower, Unilever, uh, Central. I mean Central Ramanai, Central Plaza Ramanai. So um, it's quite mixed. Just like my tower where our office is G Tower, we have Chinese, we have uh Japanese. Westerner, Singaporean, Malaysian, Thais. So these are your potential tenants. They work around the area. They doesn't like to travel too far. Or you have another kind, another group of tenants will be students that are actually uh, studying in uh, some uni that's around the area or ar along uh, Sukhumvit Road. Um, because for, for them to stay in Sukhumvit may be a bit costly. So live Ramanai, that area, that's, it's convenient because there's shopping mall, there's MRT and it's easy to get to town and you might even get tenants that's working in town like aso aso is also another cbd on its own actually in thailand along the whole main road right you can see office buildings everywhere so your tenants might be from everywhere uh in i would say the tenants who contact us is about fifth i would say 40 percent aspects 60 percent ties okay the ties uh, that are working in town working in bangkok they might not be from bangkok so they will need to rent a condominium to stay while they are working in town and they will go back to the province when there's a long holiday yeah okay but how do you rate rama nine mm. versus like maybe you know at one point in time we were selling the mm. noble project at thailand culture center mm. so one station or two mm. station i mean personally I they, uh, i feel that one two station same. away they're yeah. almost the same yep so all the tenants here at noble noble uh what's that called noble revolve rachada one and two the tenants there are all working class. They that they might mm. be working at AIA, SET, or even like uh some are like international school teachers. So because it's so convenient, that like once you come down, you turn right and then that's your MRT station. Or you just go underground, cross over the Esplanade where there's supermarket, cinema, restaurant, right? Mm. So it's actually like these are the thing that tenants who are here on long term, right? They are working here, living here, they are looking for convenience, accessibility mm. to transportation, mm. shop. Not really shopping shop, but okay, at least you must have supermarketing, uh, cafe, restaurant, all this lifestyle thing. Like I think that is why Singapore is so well planned because every of our HDB area or our condominium, our heartland, or every every area will have a community mall. So that people don't have to travel to town just to buy a simple item. Yeah. Mm. Mm. These okay. are what make a, a rental uh, desirable. Yeah, and of so course at least near near a community mall, near public transport, near their workplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. so so these are like some of the important things to look out for when when Correct. you should when you should buy you rent out because the tenants from what from what you're saying you're telling mm -hmm. us is they will want to be able to at most take one or two stops home or walk home or something like that, lah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Because the okay. transport here, you, as you know, Thailand traffic jam is really terrible. So nobody want to travel. The best is they can just take a train and then reach their office. So that's the best mm. ideal one. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think that's all for tonight. We need our Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. yeah. I, I, okay, uh, then, then I'll just close this off by summary. I think... Um, I think now that market is slow, right? Uh, uh, it's probably one of the best time for you to to do your homework because you won't be rushed into hype to buy. Uh, uh, rather than just look for the greatest discount, 
you know, you hear from your friend where where got 40% discount, 50% discount. But seriously, uh, if you all have been following our webinars since we started from COVID, previously me and Daryl, we used to do physical workshop uh, in one of our office. But after that, because of this COVID, then we decided to go online, go international. So which is a cool thing uh, because our subscribers from Hong Kong and wherever can also listen, tune in to us. Um, I've never yet had any information placed in my hands uh, that showed me that there's a 50% discount going on. Never. Okay, maybe if you if yeah. you see something like that, you can let me know. But, but then, of course, the context is important. What is the context? The context is that we only focus on investable grade properties in central Bangkok. So um, don't tell me about Sapa Mai. I really don't know where. And then some funny stations that I cannot explain. I cannot pronounce the name properly. No, those, um, we actually do not rate them and we do not take them into account because uh, Sean does the renter. So, so, you know, when we assess whether it is something that we want to... Um, uh, share with our, our, our subscribers, right? We will first ask Sean, you know, again, again, because now that we can't go there, so she has to be the one doing the legwork. She'll go and see. Then from her experience staying there for so many years, she will tell, be able to tell us what are people going to rent? What kind of renter you're getting there? Is she confident that when it completes, uh, when you pass the property to her, she will be able to handle and rent it out for you, you know, because we don't want to be in a situation that, um, you know, we sell you something, then three years later, then after then you realize that it's a lemon, then you cannot, you cannot rent it out, you cannot sell it off, then that will be an issue and it's very, it's very bad to our reputation now because we are, we are in this game for the long haul. We've been doing this for five years and we intend to do it for another next five to ten years as well. Yeah, so uh, this is the perfect time to look for great locations. So the keyword here is great locations at decent prices, not yeah. anywhere with super discount okay um so uh yeah so i hope five that you all can, can use that to sorry longer than that uh, five years uh for you much longer for you much longer oh no, no but yeah. i think hey yeah maybe for me started uh, yeah i remember i first started doing bangkok property during the the coup uh. i i went there i went there then the people are, like walking on the street uh, but but the uh, but they, but they, but they won't catch your phone on uh, very nice people they walk past you then oh. they laugh laugh eh? <laughs> maybe they could sing behind you you also don't understand shirt. <laughs> you wear yellow shirt then you run towards the river. I went neutral 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 black color black color oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay okay so uh, uh so so I think that's all for tonight la. so uh please uh you know if you are watching this uh give us a thumbs up uh subscribe to our channel if you have not done so I realized that out of 100 people who watch us on YouTube, only ten percent uh subscribe. I don't know why, right? Uh, but please subscribe to us. Yeah, join our Facebook group. You know, um, share with your friends, uh, so that so that you know more people can know about us. Um, yeah. If not, then uh, then we'll sign off here. Any any anything else to add? If not, then uh, we'll see you in two weeks time. Okay, because we run this thing uh every two weeks, but this is a first run of doing it live on YouTube and Facebook. Okay. Yeah. I got to get okay. the phone thing. You look more professional. Okay. okay. Well, okay. Uh, iPhone one can already. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right. So, uh, okay. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.